Hello and welcome back to Three Levels Deep, where we, where today we are hell diving straight first into what we've been playing. Yeah, this is not just a podcast. This is a super podcast. <laughs> uh, I'm Matt, and today I'm joined by Santo. Hello, hello. So, where, where should we? There's a there's a couple things that both of us have played. Do we kind of want to just start there? Yeah, for for once, uh, we've been playing you know similar games on the podcast. Yeah, um, one I think I have more time in than you, and the other you have more time in than me. <laughs> yeah, so it balances out. Yeah. All right. Well, I think I think we should just dive into it with Hell Divers too. All right. That's, the, that's you know one of the big recent releases. Yeah, uh, suffering from success. Yeah, uh, servers had some uh, <laughs> issues for the first oh, yeah. uh, few days. Uh, but it's, it's, all, it's all good now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, except for, uh, I think, uh, when the mechs came out, I think the requisition system went down. Oh. So you couldn't actually purchase to unlock the mechs. So they just made it, uh, everyone could call it in, in missions for, I don't know if it's still ongoing or if they've ended that now, but... Uh, the mechs are at like level twenty five though, so I, I got to grind out to get get that unlock. <laughs> oh boy, yeah. Uh, but yeah, no hell divers. Um, I I'm, I'm having a lot of fun with this game. I'm having uh less fun with this game. It, it's it's got some mechanics that I'm not a big <laughs> fan of. We'll get into them, but <laughs> uh, I I yeah I I I understand that. Um, and like I have my own issues with them, but. Uh, yeah, so it's a, it's a four-player co-op, uh, game where, essentially, you're, you're basically ODSTs from Halo, but you're, uh, you're trying to defend Super Earth and spread democracy, <laughs> ma manage democracy across the galaxy, um, fighting bugs and robots, <laughs> yeah, that, that's one of the best things about the game, to me, is the tone of it. Oh yeah, like, the tutorial is hilarious. All of this just like random crap that your uh, characters are yelling. Uh, all the loading screen tips. Yeah, it's it's all like really funny and it's like yelling at some space bugs. It's like that's the taste of democracy when you blow them up. Like that's just stupid. <laughs> it's it's reveling in its stupidity and it's it's really great. It's oh, really yeah. super. And you just add super to everything. Super Earth. Uh, super SSD. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, it's, uh, yeah, no, I, I, why, why don't we get into the, uh, issues you've got with it? I, I know one of them is one that I've got a bit of an issue with because it, it's a more of a personal thing, but I can look past it for this. And that's that when you reload, you're wasting all the ammo in the magazine. That you have yeah, <laughs> I really, I hate that in games. It's, like, I get that it's more realistic, but games aren't a, supposed to be about realism for me. I, I understand that and the other mechanic that I don't like about the game. Like, I understand um, it them being in the game. And I think they actually do make a lot of sense for the game. Because this is kind of uh, a game where you're moving around a map, trying to complete objectives and then extract. And so there's, like, different points on the map where you can get more ammo. You can call down, like, heavy weapons uh, on a timer. So you basically have to, you know, re manage your resources as you're playing the game. Uh, like your ammo, your grenades, your call downs, and your time. Your respawns. Be your respawns, yeah. Which, that's, that's hilarious to me, that, like, with a four-person squad you get 20 respawns yep which is quite a lot and we have run out of them in a couple of missions that we played. oh yeah uh, especially so, up there when we got to uh hard uh i think we were like oh, one level above hard challenging or something no challenging is right before hard oh okay yeah i think we were one above hard where are we uh but i don't know maybe maybe not i i when when I when I play again with uh, randoms online, I haven't gone above challenging. I I don't yeah. wanna I don't wanna go higher than that with randoms. Same. I, I've only played a couple matches with uh 
randoms and I, I did the same thing where I played at, on like the level before hard. And uh, that's not something that I necessarily want to do in this game. I don't necessarily want to play it with only random other people. Yeah. Uh, because it's... If it was, if there were a few uh, parts of the game that were less about communication, I might. But there's a couple objectives that require, you know, like voice chat, basically. <laughs> yeah, to, like there's one where you have to align a radar dish in the right, um, like at the right angle, and that one requires communication between uh, two people. Yeah, and like you know, like so, some stuff doesn't necessarily require you to use voice chat like there's doors that you can only open with two people to yep. get like a cache of items and like those generally like i was able to you know recognize that somebody else was doing that pretty easily uh yeah even when playing with no voice chat but well, yeah it's course. definitely a game that I'll, i'd rather play with friends even like oh, just yeah. you know one one friend and two randoms i'm fine with that but yeah pure random as long as you've got I, nah, one no other thanks. person to communicate with yeah like, I, I was doing a match, um, like, it was my session, a bunch of people join on me, and I'm like, and I'm just, like, pinging, okay, I'm heading over here, and then they all go off on their own way together as a group, and I'm just all on my own, trying to do what I wanted, I'm, I'm hosting this mission. <laughs> yeah. The glory of, uh, people, on, people online, because, like, the game's kind of interesting in that it's, you do have to extract at some point, and there is a time limit. Yep. So, the question kind of becomes, how much stuff do you want to do in the mission? And some people are just going to have different thoughts on that. Some people are going to want to just, like, complete the main objective and extract mm -hmm. and start playing another mission as fast as possible. Whereas, when we were playing, we were trying to, you know, do all the optional objectives, clear out all the enemy encampments before we extract it, like, do everything in the mission before we go. So... It could be yeah, a little and, uh, tricky balancing that. And it does give you extra experience and uh, uh, money to purchase stuff by doing those side objectives. So yeah, if, you, so if you've got the time, you might as well do as many as you can. So one mechanic that I think is really fun are the call downs. You basically have oh, yeah. uh, a set of commands on a cooldown. Some of them are limited uses as well. Where you can call down heavy weapons, airstrikes, equipment, stuff Turrets. like that. Yep. And this is also the system you use to uh, respawn your allies. And it's really funny because you have to, like, at least for a controller, I'm assuming it's a similar thing on PC, you have to hold in one of the triggers yeah. and then press uh, directions on the directional pad uh, specifically for your separate call down. So you kind of have to, like, memorize them. I know you were saying that you couldn't tell me what the uh, specific directions were for one of them, but just muscle memory. Yeah, <laughs> at that point, it's like, it's like doo -doo 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 -doo. Yeah, I, it was for the uh, it was for the respawn. Like, uh, it, it's just muscle memory at this point now. <laughs> yeah, so that's a really interesting um, way because one, it you know it allows you to have a lot of different things that you can do on the on a controller because at this point if you're making a shooter on pc most people are supporting controllers at this point so the oh, design yeah. Yeah. of the game kind of you know has to match that uh and, and actually like even this game like playing for mouse and keyboard this game has very good customization that i haven't seen in other games yeah the, like the context sensitive uh things that you can do with your controls are really really good yeah like you can have i think i think there's like six different options you could potentially have six different things tied to one key bind it's just yeah. a matter of like whether it's hold a long press a double press a single press like i've got crouch as press control i've got prone as um uh, prone is double tap control and or wait no i've got prone as hold control and at the moment i have dive as double tap control but i'm thinking of moving that to space instead because i don't really mm -hmm. like unless you have at least from what i've played so far unless you have the jetpack 
there's not really anything on space on the keyboard from my settings, so I might as well use space for diving. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, and uh, speaking as somebody who has to program keybinds uh, for software, like, it's so nice that this game has, uh, you know, the ability to do double taps and uh, holding buttons uh, for for our stuff. It's just like, are you holding control? Are you holding alt? Or are you holding both? And it's unfortunate because we're kind of actually running out of keybinds. It's too many yeah. features of the program, too many <laughs> windows. Uh, but uh, something else I want to bring down, uh, talk about the uh, call downs is one thing that I love about the input system is that it kind of reinforces what I think is this game's like prime directed prime directive, which is chaos. Like mm. having to you know hold a button and then put in like a four to seven sequence directional thing. Like yeah, and, and you got to stop moving to do it too. Yeah, at least on keyboard. Anyways, I don't know about uh, controller. Uh, I forget. I think you might be able to move around just slowly. But okay, like, because, you can't like dive while doing it, I don't think. Yeah, because at least on keyboard, the uh, it, the directional inputs for the call downs are the movement keys. So you can't really move around while also calling something down. Oh, well, I, I have the luck of having the directional pad. Yeah. The analog stick is different, so a bit odd. Yeah, and the... The thing about some of those call downs, though, is that some of them, you know, are big airstrikes and big, like, strafing runs or something, which ties into the other mechanic that I'm, I completely understand for the game, but I'm not a fan of, which is full friendly fire. Yep. <laughs> Everything can friendly fire. To the point where, like, even, like, the in-game descriptions of, like, the sentry turrets that you can put down specifically say, it's got friendly fire, buddy. <laughs> Don't stand in front of this. Yep. And you might not even be standing in front of it, and then it turns, and then you're in front of it without being, without even being aware of it. <laughs> yep. Um, and in fact, actually, uh, with the mech, I had something happen to me that I wasn't sure what happened until I heard about this later. Um, I don't know if this is a bug, but when you're turning the mech to the right, so you've got on your on the left of the mech, you've got like the Gatling gun. And on the right, you've got missile pods. Or on the left, you have missile pods. So when you start turning to the right, if you fire a missile, I, I think the missile kind of just spawns in the direction you're facing from the pod. And it ends up hitting the main body and blowing you up. Oh my god, that's fantastic. Uh, so I feel like this is a bug. But as it is right now, I kind of like to accept it as... Oh yeah, no, Super Earth contracted the lowest bidder for these mechs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that's that that's honestly fitting with the spirit of the game. Uh yeah, I you know, I think it's it's good for what it is. It's not like it's a full price eighty dollar game. Oh uh, yeah. Or anything like that. Um Which is nice you... to see. We're seeing a lot of these lower price games that are just blowing up. And kind of just putting the AAA industry to shame. Yeah, uh, because like a game that's cheaper, like is going to be more widely accessible, not just for you know people in North America, but in other parts of the world where yeah, uh, game prices can be like really crazy. I mean, we're getting there in Canada now. <laughs> yeah, it's well, getting there. <laughs> uh, it's still no Australia. No. Uh, have you done any missions against the uh, robots yet? One or two. Mm. I was more so waiting until I unlocked the uh, assault rifle, uh, which I do have it now. I haven't used it against them yet. But um, the assault rifle that has medium armor penetration. Right. Okay. That makes sense, considering, you know, robots. Yep. Um, and, oh, actually, uh, I've figured out... Com so when we were playing last, remember how those chargers were just absolutely demolishing us? Yep. I figured out what you're supposed to do against them. Uh, you want to shoot for their front legs. Oh, not okay. The, 
I, I kept shooting for the back thinking it was soft. No, you want to go for their legs to blow the armor off. And then the leg becomes a weak point. Hmm. Uh, the, the back is definitely softer. I like there's uh, an indicator, like a hit indicator, whether or not you're hitting armor on an enemy or not. And that wasn't popping up when I was shooting them in the back. Okay. But yeah, no, but the yeah, leg is that, definitely more efficient, though. Yeah, that makes sense because some enemies do have like dismemberment kind of stuff yeah. where you can blow off their armor and stuff like that. So that makes perfect sense. Yeah, for, for anyone who's struggling with chargers, now you know. We start talking about chargers, and then my uh, headset gives me the low battery beep. Oh. It's like, oh, gotta <laughs> charge it now. Yeah, I've been I've been dealing with a new headset myself here. Um, it's, it's an updated model of the one I had before. It doesn't hold as much of a charge, and it does a bunch of weird things. I don't like it as much, but the, the wireless transmitter has an aux in for my consoles from the monitor, so... <laughs> it, it's it's what it's what works for my setup <laughs> okay uh i think i'm pretty much done talking about health divers uh you got yeah. anything else no i think that about covers it just a fun four-player co-op game uh decently priced that completely blew up apparently this thing it had been shown off in playstation uh i want to call them dr directs they essentially are. <laughs> they, they'd shown it off in the PlayStation Directs for a while, and I had heard no one talk about it until it came out. <laughs> yeah, like, it's, again, one of those games that just, like, completely blew up. Like, the, I've seen gameplay of the first Helldivers, which was more like of an isometric yeah. kind of shooter thingy. Uh, and that looked, you know, fairly similar mechanics, just in, in a different uh, perspective, but... I don't know. Something about uh, behind the back. Third person. A lot, yep. a lot higher fidelity. Oh, actually, that is one other thing I want to say. Uh, the game also has a lot of customization for uh, when you uh, aim down sights. Um, oh, okay. Be because, like, uh, each gun, like, you can have three different levels of magnification. Uh, like, the starting gun, you can set whether it's uh, full auto, which full auto by default, semi-auto, or burst. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, like, so there's just, and, and you can even set, like, uh, what kind of scope I think you have, whether it's just, like, a red dot, or more of a, more of, like, a magnet, um, uh, not magnetized. Magnification. Uh, mag more of a magnification scope, like, like, there's a lot of nice customization there, and it seems to save it from gun to gun for your preference. You just need to hold down reload, and you get a menu that comes up that allows you to customize it. Yeah, that's good. I always love to see options like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I guess... Uh, so, I guess the next thing we've both been uh, playing, you, you... I think you have about four times as much time in it as I do. Uh, um, I have yeah, about I've got five hours. I think you've got about twenty. Uh, Twenty-seven, but sure. okay. And that's a Blaze Blue Entropy Effect. Just gonna get this out of the way right now. Not a Blaze Blue game. Dude, I'm just gonna call it Entropy Effect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's so weird, man. Like the game it reminds me of most is Star Fox Adventures, just for the fact that Star Fox Adventures mm. was a completely different game during most of its development. And they just added Star Fox at the end and made a GameCube game instead of an N64 game to, yeah, that, you know, sell it and, more. And that's the thing. That's what it feels like, but I don't think that's how it was developed. I, I, I didn't pay attention to its development cycle because it, it went through early access. Only yeah. I only played it after it was full release, so I have no idea. Um, seems like it's... Um, it's developed by, like, Act 91, who I believe is a Chinese developer. Uh, I believe so, yeah. And that makes sense for a couple things in the game. Uh, like, uh, the, the like the voice uh, options. Like, there's voice options for uh, English, Japanese, and Chinese. Uh, for the, like, outside of battle hub world characters and stuff like that. But in battles, there's only Japanese voice acting for the Blaze Blue characters. Yeah. 
um, which I feel like they just took existing voice lines that they had from the Blaze Blue games already for them. I don't know that it's anything new. Um, and well, apparently, in when it was in early access, um, I guess they must have fixed this for the full release. But I'd heard that for some reason, or I guess they didn't have the full voices yet. So in early access, like everything out of the game was just uh, in in Chinese um, and subtitled. There was no mm -hmm. English voice language yet at that time. Yeah, but it's. It's weird that this game was in early access and then came out, yet still seems like it's in early access a little bit because they keep making mechanical changes to the game, which yeah. some of them are actually fairly significant. Like I, when the game came out, I this was actually a game that I was very rarely going to play on release day, but then I saw like a big list of uh, changes, and was a little bit busy that weekend. And there were just more changes like the next few days. It's like, okay, these seem like significant. I'm going to hold off for a week just to let the game settle. Mm -hmm. Did that. But then they changed a bunch more stuff. Like at the start, uh, there is a new game plus. But your like collection progress for you, the tactics, which are your like in buffs that you get to your character in game, uh, that didn't carry over initially. So when I did it, like, I lost all my collection progress there, which only really matters for achievements. And I don't but care about those, so it's, it's not a big but, deal. But... but it does carry over now? Yeah. Okay. And they and they revamped the, like, uh, adaptive... Not not adaptive. Like, there there's a difficulty system where you can choose different modifiers that make the game more difficult, but you get more rewards and get other perks during the run. They completely revamped that, like, th four days ago or something. Oh wow! Okay, so <laughs> it's it's very uh, strange, and they've also announced that there's another character coming uh, as a free update at some point. But they haven't, okay, uh... yeah, because like I was going, I, I haven't unlocked every character yet, but there's definitely some like key Blaze Blue characters that are kind of missing from from there. Yeah, it's it's difficult what you do when you only have a cast of eight characters for something like this, for example. Half the characters are from the first place of the game. Now, mm -hmm. Maybe not the... Well... Actually, th thinking about it, that, that might that might have been the half that I would have chosen. Maybe I would have swapped... No, no. I was going to say swap uh, Tager for Hakuman, but Tager, I don't think, would work much in the... Like, uh, having a grappler and kind of yeah. like an action roguelike flashy game that requires speed is maybe a bit uh different whereas having a character with a gigantic sword that hits like a truck a little bit fit maybe that fits a little bit more yeah uh, and of while we're on the characters uh i don't know how you felt but uh i feel like some of the characters are very underpowered either that or like i'm not utilizing them right uh yeah well the game has um it has some meta progression where you upgrade how much max HP you start with, as well yeah. as adding different buffs. Uh, and it takes a little bit for you to get like those different buffs uh, sorted, like the, uh, the the mind upgrades or whatever the gems that you uh, put in. You can put six of them and then upgrade them three three different tiers, and those can make uh, a pretty big difference. For example, like. One of them is you get extra like HP potions during the run, and if you get, have that fully upgraded, you start with four instead of one, which is pretty significant. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, some of those can definitely uh, help you out a lot. Uh, but there's there's a couple characters that I think are underpowered until you get a specific like feature for them, because okay. the. Because uh, one of the main systems in this game is that you collect things called potentials during the run, and that unlocks different uh, aspects, it, it, aspects of your character. It, it gives your characters more more that they can do. Yeah, more abilities or modifiers on their current abilities. And some of them are just plain... feels like they're better than others or, like, core to how the character plays. Like, yeah. Like, every character can get 
ones that are like a, a double, a, well, actually, you start with a double jump, but a triple jump or a triple dash. Like, those are nice, but, and they'll help you, you know, evade th things, but they're not going to help your damage output much other than the fact that every potential you get does raise your uh, damage output a little bit. But yeah, for like others, the, like... The um, one that's... The one that, that stands out to me, though, is Lambda 11. Like, even after getting some potentials, like, I felt like I was doing nothing with her still. Like, no damage. Yeah. She, she's really difficult and uh, kind of needs to pair her with certain effects to really really make her go off. Like, I have had a couple runs where I was just filling the screen with crap. And it was just, like, easy peasy. But other times, especially on some of the harder difficulties with just increased enemy HP, it felt like I was taking forever to clear out simple mm. mobs. So, and they actually address that. Like, they have tutorial videos for each of the characters, and for her, they specifically say, like, her damage output starts off low, but once you ramp up with potentials, it gets better, which is true, but I don't necessarily think I would have designed her that way, personally. Yeah. And then, like, Rogna with, like... Rogna's his... the hardest character to use. Easily. Yeah, it sure seems like it because like how much health his skill moves take and then the the re the return you get back on them at least initially does not feel like it's worth it like it scales based on how much hp you have left like if you're at fairly low hp you do it is a net positive but if you're at like high hp it's mm. a net negative it feels like and I haven't played Ragnar all that much because I just don't like playing him. I don't like having to manage that. Because if you miss enemies, you just lost all of that health yeah. for, no, for nothing. So maybe I'm thinking like maybe you have to hit multiple enemies with the skills or something like that. I'm not really sure. Uh, but, I mean, a lot of the characters do do feel quite nice. And that that's the thing that I like the most about this game is just how it feels. Like... I am bad at fighting games. I love fighting games, but I'm so bad at them. I can't execute worth a damn. Uh, like, just... Even, like, I refunded Street Fighter Six because I was trying to do a very simple-sounding three-hit combo, and I just couldn't do it. Like, I tried for 45 minutes and decided, okay, mm. I'm still under the uh, threshold to re refund this on Steam. Uh, I'm gonna <laughs> do it, because, like, I, I just can't. But this game, like, you can straight up mash out stuff. Like, it's very fluid, and it doesn't punish you for treating it like an action game instead of a fighting game. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, it, like, has, like, very fighting game combos where your, like, character's moving up around a bunch, and it it just feels like you're... Like, I hate using the word the words, like, power fantasy when it comes to video games, but it, it feels like you're very powerful doing, doing this. Uh, it's very fun that way. Yeah, and um, so one thing I like about this game that um, took me a little bit to realize what exactly was going on was what happens... So when you start a new run, you can select um, characters from your previous run, and I was like, what is this doing? And it took me to realize that you get two extra moves based like big special moves based on who you choose but then you also can inherit some uh perks that they had picked up from the runs you did with them and i think that's a pretty neat uh system yeah it's it's really interesting like yeah you pick up uh something called legacy skill which is just an extra ability that you can do you pick up uh a trait from the character for example like Noel deals extra damage to far off enemies, uh, and stuff like that. And then, yeah, you pick up two uh, tactics, which are uh, one of the things that you pick up during the run that's you know random, and there's different tactic trees, like for you know like fire, ice, lightning, poison, like all, all of the very fairly standard stuff there. But the abil the abilities that they give like are interesting and fun to use, and yeah, it. Like, I've done runs where I've specifically, like, tried to focus in a specific direction to try and get specific uh, tactics to use on later runs to kind of, like, be able to mix and match characters really effectively. But one thing that you got to be careful with is that a character can't inherit uh, from themselves. Yeah. And you can't inherit two... Uh, they're two called Evo the same. Evo types from the same character, so... 
like I have one really I think there's one ability in the game that is actually broken uh, and that I use to get through <laughs> some of the harder uh, difficulties uh, because I use that on one character that means that I actually have was struggling beating the game with that character because <laughs> I couldn't just rely on the very very uh, mm. cheesy stuff and at some point I just decided I'm not even going to use this anymore because it's like taking a little bit of the fun out of the game because <laughs> it was making things too easy uh, I also really like that, um, I forget what it's called, but it's the, it's like those little, like, additional challenges you can do, where you select one of your previous, uh, characters from your previous runs to yeah. do the challenge, and then they're locked out from doing any more of those challenges. Yeah, the, uh, mind training. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's like you, you're fight, basically it's like a boss fight mode. And you're using exactly the characters that you used previously, which usually I, I try to, you know, finish the run and then go do one of those. So I, it's the character still fresh in my mind. Um, but they, they actually changed that a bit because how it used to work was you pick a character, do the run, win or lose, you can't use that character again. Uh, but now they've made it so that you can use uh, characters that you haven't locked out on ones that you've already completed and not have them get locked out because there are like, it, there is a little bit of reward for that. And also it does let you, you know, kind of practice fighting these bosses with, because yeah. the bosses are really like the hard parts of the game. I didn't find the, uh, the stages that bad outside of a couple specific kinds of enemies. Yeah. It's pretty. And, and like, there's not really too much variety in the enemies, like as you're going through each of the stages, like yeah, it's pretty like much dealing four to six different types of enemies, yeah, and they're that, that, that fairly is, similar. That is one of my, uh, I'd say, one of the flaws with the game is I feel like there should be a little more level variety, like maybe some branching areas, um, just to change it up a bit, so you're not going through those same areas on every run. Yeah, I, I, I can see that. Like, the, the biggest problem with the game for me, yeah, is just it gets repetitive. Uh, well, okay, here's the thing. It gets repetitive fairly quickly, but at the same time, this was a very cheap game. Oh, yeah. Like, it was 20-something bucks for us in Canada, so it's probably like 20 bucks US or something. Like 15, maybe? Like 15, 15 to 20, somewhere yeah, there? Given our exchange rate. Uh, so, like... Me saying, like, oh, you know, it's kind of repetitive. And I, you know, I'm feeling like I don't re really want to go play it all that much now. I still got 20-something hours out of it. So that's still a very good return on my money, in, in my opinion. Oh, yeah. And the, and the time that I was playing it was quite fun. So I I, 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 get, the, I, get, I get the criticism that it's repetitive. I, I you know, I, I think that, but... It's not nearly as bad as it would be if this was a more expensive game. Yeah. No, I think I think any game where you can get your return down to basically a dollar or less per hour you've played is is worthwhile. Yeah, I, I was talking with a, uh, a friend of ours about this, and it's just like, gaming is actually a very cost-effective hobby. It, more cost-effective than going to a movie. At, like, by, like, a very large margin. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, like, the story stuff in this game, the stuff that's just, like, not blaze blue at all, it's doled out, uh, kind of like you just get these, like, kind of fragments of, of the story as you play, as you do runs. Yeah, and you're just trying to piece together and just slowly figure out what's going on with this world. Yeah, and the, um, the story cutscenes are portrayed in a really interesting style, actually, where they're everything's made up of little dots like mm -hmm. but it still looks like you know a 3d environment and stuff like that so it's a very striking visual presentation for a bunch of bullshit <laughs> yeah uh a, a, bunch of, a bunch of very vague stuff uh with uh improper uh bad subtitles that, that that's actually one of the big problems with this game is that the translation is not very good and this is mm. something that I've noticed a lot from games from Chinese developers, unfortunately, is that the translations are not great. I, I get that, like, 
Chinese is a very difficult language. Uh, so to, to translate from or to. Yeah. So there's uh, there like a decent amount of patches for just like optimizing description of blank where they just like basically like fix the translation to make things less vague or just like just bad uh, grammar and stuff like that. Um, I mean, I think it works fine for that uh, one thing you talk to pretty regularly to see those uh, cutscenes, which is intentionally very vague. <laughs> yeah, it, it... <laughs> and like a, lo a lot of the prompts that your character has are are, are kind of funny. Uh, very very snarky. Yeah, on your little robot guy. Yeah, because it's, it's basically just like a robot city because there's been it's like post-apocalypse there's some weird particles that drive people crazy or something like that yep again very vague i don't i haven't seen all the uh, story fragments i haven't seen the true ending and i've actually looked up at the requirements for the true ending and i'm not sure i'm not sure if i can get it it's like i completed this story the first time and then it pops up a thing saying like grass you complete the story you can't collect any more of those story fragments but you can still play the game the, so if you want to you know see more of the story you got new game plus i'm like okay final new game plus it's not like the uh like progression aspects of the game are that bad yeah i i feel like it certainly wouldn't be like even if you just started from a new file i feel like it's not that bad at least from what i've played so far well the thing is just like the progression like oh you know the the little well, the I shouldn't say the progression. I should say like the tutorialization isn't that bad. Like you get to the point where mm. you've unlocked everything that you can do pretty quickly. Yeah. But the you still have to uh, unlock all all those story bits again on New Game Plus. Oh uh, right. And and I so, guess all of um I forget what they're called, but they're those those modifiers you can equip outside of runs to those carry some over. advantages. Uh, the, okay those do carry those carry over and your like level that determines how much extra max hp you start with that carries over all your currency carries over okay uh you're on the fact that you've unlocked all the characters carries over so like all the gameplay stuff carries over pretty much but none of the story stuff which is unfortunate because i i do game plus play through got a bunch of these fragments check the requirements for the true ending and i'm not sure i'm still not sure if i can get it because the like one guide is a little bit vague on a certain point. Um, I think I might have seen the guide you were talking about. Yeah, where... So it's like, oh, after you do this story quest, you get an option to determine, like, something that happens. I didn't get that option. Maybe because I went through the, uh, like, story quest progression faster than the story you know plot progression that you see in this like side room and i've done a few runs at this point and i'm not getting any of the uh story fragments that drop because and huh. those are very like it doesn't really say how you really unlock those for me it seemed like if you just like you know complete an area with each character like you'll get one but I aren't I'm not getting any more and it feels like I've gotten to at least the final bit with every character so I don't know if there's some characters hmm. I need to beat it with to get those specific fragments or what maybe there's a better uh, guide that's out now I don't know but uh, one, one of the things is that like to unlock the true ending you do need to say specific things in specific conversations as well and yeah. on my second playthrough, I was literally mashing through every single story conversation, so I don't even know what uh, oh. dialogue choices I chose. So if I want yeah. to see the true ending, I might have to either do Game Plus again, or see if maybe there's some console commands or something that I can <laughs> that I can do to see it, or just watch it on YouTube or something. I'm yeah. not particularly invested in the story anyways, so whatever. I'm not too too bummed out about that, but it's it's not the best system that they chose unfortunately uh one, one thing that i'd love to talk about but haven't been able to do is the multiplayer uh but there's multiplayer there's multiplayer uh i didn't like the, know <laughs> in the top area on the far on the uh, left is the lobby for it and it's pvpve 
where I guess you're going around doing stages collecting resources and then the person that extracts with the most resources wins. Uh, or if you just, if you die, then you lose. Uh, so I tried getting into a lobby a couple times. One time I was in the lobby for like 10 minutes, nobody else joined. And another oh. time I was in the lobby for like 10 minutes and like two other people joined, but it's like a 12 person lobby or something like that, maybe more. So I feel like maybe, because like uh, the player base for this game, I'm guessing is largely in Japan and China. Uh, given like comments on like their patches and stuff like that, a lot of them are in Chinese and Blaze Blue, you know. Is a Japanese franchise, so it's possible that it's like a time zone thing, where I gotta try, <laughs> yeah, a different time I to mean, get in. But according to Steam charts, there's like three thousand one hundred seventy people playing right now. Yeah, apparently so... the all time peak is only about uh, six thousand nine hundred four. Yeah, maybe they were a bit uh, ambitious with the uh, how the mul- they decided to design the multiplayer mode. But there's like a solo mode and a duos mode. So, and like a bunch of modifiers that you can put on your characters. And they also are like adaptively balancing characters based on their performance so that they don't start off with the same HP and damage that they deal. So, like, <laughs> right now I think like Ragna has like much higher stats than everybody else just because his play style is not really conducive mm. <laughs> to uh, the game with like having to drain your hp to do your skills and that's not yeah. that's not optional that's a thing that you have to do so like it seems like it might be interesting but i just i can't actually do it so we'll have to see like i maybe maybe in the future they'll either implement bots or something or yeah i, I feel like find, it could like, just a be Steam a mode group. that a lot of people are just kind of ignoring yeah, you didn't even know it was in the game, yeah. so uh, that's possible. Yeah, um, have you uh, beaten like beaten the final boss in a run yet? Uh, no, I have got into what I believe is the final area, though. Yeah, well, uh, Space Omega. Then, the final area yeah. is pretty obvious that's the final area. Yeah. Um, and then, like, I'm exploring the area, and I find this one area that's, like, Looks like this is the way to go. I'm going to finish exploring the rest of it. And then I go to this thing. And it just teleported me to another boss that I was not ready for. I was not expecting. (laughs) Yeah, the way that that works is that there's like a small HP boost, a small MP boost. Two uh, bosses uh, that some of them are ones you fight during the uh, stages. And there's there's like, uh, I think two that are exclusive to that area. And then yeah, there's the I fi- think I encounter an exclusive one. Yeah, and then there's the final, final boss, which is like a big pillar thingy. And so, uh, this might be a weird translation thing, but after beating the two other elite, not elite, the, the two other bosses before the actual final boss, you get a pop-up saying, like, you've com- defeated these enemies, now you can fight the f- final boss. But I've gone to the final boss directly and still been able to fight it. So... Huh. I think that might just be a mistranslation that's like, yeah. instead of like, now you can go fight the final boss. It's like, there's nothing else to do. Go fight the final boss. More like, it's not like you're unlocking it. It's just that now this is what you should do. Yeah. The final boss is a huge pain in the ass. <laughs> it's like, big difficulty spike. It took me a lot of runs to finally be able to beat it. Until I basically just like, who did I beat it with first? I think I might have beaten it first with Noel because I had like, triple jump and the ability to like reset my combos in the air after jumping and dashing and like an attack that let me basically stay in the air a long time (laughs) so i was just like okay i'm just gonna like stay away from you (laughs) to be able to actually beat you because he pretty difficult uh yeah i think that's about it for me on the game yeah so yeah that's uh entropy effect featuring characters from blaze blue Yep. <laughs> uh, Featuring Ragna and... from the Blaze Blue series. <laughs> uh, and I guess while we're on the Blaze Blue topic, um, so one thing I did uh, a while back was I talked about I uh, I 
bought a Japanese points or uh, eShop card so I could buy Suica game before it came out uh, in North America, which came out real quickly yep. <laughs> after I had <laughs> bought it. And I had some leftover uh, uh, funds on my Japanese PSN account or uh, PSN uh, Nint uh, Nintendo eShop account. Um, so I ended up picking up two games, uh, just two cheap games, just browsing what was on sale, uh, that had English support in them or, or, or had English language in it. Um, and one is, the first one is Eat Beat Dead Spike Son, hmm. which is a Blaze Blue Rhythm game. Yeah. Um, Dead Spike is one of Ragnar's special moves. <laughs> Unfortunately, this game is very basic. Um, it, it's not all that great. There's like no kind of progression system or anything from what I could tell. No unlocking of more songs. And it just has a very small library of songs to choose from, which is very disappointing uh, when you look at just how much music Blaze Blue has. Yeah, I guess. It's a, a bit unfortunate. Uh, oh, actually, here's here's a question. So, for they announced that they're going to add one more character for free for, to Entropy Effect. Um, given how the game's done, I have no idea if they're going to add more. Who would you like to see in the game? Oh, I mean, I I have to say my main. I have to say Platinum the Trinity. <laughs> Yeah, I can see Platinum being fun because she's got a lot of like unorthodox moves. Yeah, like, I I love I love her weird shit. <laughs> yeah, like it, like even even in Guilty Gear, I gravitate towards the weird character. Like I play I played Jacko in uh, Exerd. Uh, like I just love throwing down her little minion houses and just having those guys just go and attack the enemy and self destructing them. I I don't very much care for how she plays in uh in um the latest version why why strive? is it, uh, strive strive yeah i i'm not i'm not really a big fan of how jacko plays in strive uh but no i i i, I like weird characters in fighting <laughs> games sometimes sometimes yeah like my main for blaze blue was a uh, is a yoy who could be interesting but they would have to Im implement her mechanic where she basically had two modes where in one mode she's kind of like if you hit with certain attacks you build up a meter that you can spend in a different mode to use like special attacks i'm not sure how well that would translate that's the thing is that like every character in blaze blue seems to have their like their own personal meter <laughs> and just like yeah. their own personal kind of uh mechanic that goes on with them that you know it's, it's Kind of telling that uh, Street Fighters decide to add all those, you know, V triggers and V effects or whatever. It's like kind of the same thing. <laughs> uh, Actually, you know who I'd want to see more than Platinum? Yeah. I want to see Hazama. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That could be fun because it's chains. Yeah. Just like with zipping around. Though I will say the first character I tried was Mai. And I had a lot of trouble with her because I just kept like running into enemies and like traveling too far with my attacks i didn't want to because mm. there's like certain like traps in the stage and stuff like that and like damage walls that i kept <laughs> i kept accidentally running into yeah so for me i think my there. my was the second character i tried first was uh noel yeah like i think the yeah the character that i would want would be is a yoy with like a proper mechanics the character that i think they're probably gonna add they're probably gonna add makoto not a uh, the scroll yeah. girl is my guess. Yep. <laughs> uh, and that could be good too. There's not really like an up close like brawler type character. Yeah, I guess not. Like yeah, I, could, I could see that. Taukaka is a little bit like that, but not really. So who knows? You said you uh, bought, pick up two games from the Japanese yeah. shop? Um, so the second one I picked up is uh, Sudo Sudokats. <laughs> All right. Um, so it's Sudoku. But with Sudoku. cats instead of Sudoku, but yeah. with cats instead of numbers. Okay. So you've got now you can toggle on numbers instead, but that kind of takes the fun out of it. 
Uh, so you've got like these nine different, clearly different cats that you uh, have to arrange in the same way you would the numbers in a Sudoku, Sudoku puzzle, Seppuku puzzle. <laughs> God, that would that would mess me up. I don't. I think I'd be really bad at that. Like I'm decent at Sudoku, <laughs> but having cats instead of numbers, I think that would just like mess with my mess with my brain, and I wouldn't be able to just like e- it like perceive where like the, the I have duplicates and stuff like that as easily. Yeah, I I will say it certainly. Uh, it is a little more challenging than if you just have the numbers for me personally. But I did I did get through every puzzle in the game because. Uh, unfortunately, it does have a very limited number of puzzles. Uh, there's only 39 total. Um, six of them are 4x4 four four puzzles, 13 are 6x6, six six, and then the remaining 20 are 9x9. Nine nine. That's that's very low. <laughs> yeah, especially I mean, I, for how many combinations there are. Yeah, like I, I get that it was like a budget game, but you know... I'm pretty sure there's tools out there that you can very easily make regular Sudokus very easily. Yeah. So that feels low, but whatever. Um, and like the, the last thing I want to say about it is, uh, so each of the nine cats um, are based on actual cats. And as you play, you can unlock their bios. Oh my God. <laughs> that's, I, that's fun at least. Uh, speaking of puzzles, um, I, I I did something bad. I bought a humble bundle, despite how mm. big my backlog is. I bought uh, yeah, the, uh, I, the. I did the same. <laughs> you bought the puzzle game bundle? Not not the puzzle or, game. Oh, bundle, okay, but I'll I'll get I'll get to it. All right. Uh, I I at least have played a game from it at this point. Uh, I played a game called uh, Patrick's Parabox, and this game. Okay. So this game has at least 200 puzzles in it. I've done about maybe 20. I've done about 50. And already, like, they're starting to really hurt my brain. <laughs> like, they're, they're getting really hard and really hard, tough to wrap my head around. Because it's, it's a block-pushing puzzle. But where you have to push uh, certain blocks onto certain uh, areas in the level. It's all grid-based. And also have your character go to a certain point to end the level. Now, the where it gets tricky is that you can push boxes into other boxes. And you yourself can can move into other boxes. Like, certain boxes will have, like, edges on them and then, like, a hollow center. And if you push... If you have those on a barrier and you push another box into the, like, hollow space, it'll go into that hollow space. And then you can walk into that hollow space, again, if it's, you know, I guess a barrier... And then it'll like zoom in to that box, so so that you can move stuff around that box too. So like there's weird stuff going on where you can you know push boxes into other boxes to kind of like transport multiple at a time through like a small barrier to get to uh, where you need to push everything. But the game also features like really difficult things. Like it features recursion. Where you are simultaneously inside of a box and outside of that box at the same time. What? This is gonna be really difficult to explain. <laughs> but basically, like there there will be a like recursion box in there what, that might have like an opening at the top and the bottom, and then like you in the outer box will can move in, uh, into an opening at the top and bottom of the stage. And then you'll pop out the top or bottom of that recursion block. So it's the puzzles are really like really challenging in that way. Like they're they're difficult, but they are like nicely challenging and the game does have a good progression of teaching you the mechanics as you go along. There's uh there's like challenge stages in the different worlds that you can play in as well. It's so far, I don't know how... I I am very much a completionist when it comes to puzzle games. Uh, but I don't know how far I'm going to get in this. Because, mm. like, at some point, I if it's getting this difficult this early, at some point, I think that, like, these are going to be, like, puzzles that might take me, like, multiple days per puzzle thinking about. Just <laughs> to thinking get through. about it, yeah. There's an achievement in the game for creating a paradox. I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, 
I like the sound of it though. Yeah, like it's 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 very well done for what it is, and I think that if you are a fan of puzzle games of like positional puzzle games, especially that you you'll have a great time with it. But holy holy crap, man, <laughs> it's pre- it, it's pretty intense. I I, I just got to say, anytime someone says recursion, my mind just immediately goes to that edited Winnie the Pooh comic. Oh, it's, that's that's <laughs> one of, that's one of my favorite ones. Like as far as I'm concerned, there isn't another meme of that image where the poo watch out you're eating blank there's no other version of that meme even though that is a meme with a bunch of different versions that's the definitive versions you're yeah eating i've seen other versions but they don't matter to me no <laughs> it's that one yeah sweet jesus poo that's not honey you're eating recursion <laughs> all right um so yeah so you you purchased a humble bundle uh yes um so i purchased a humble bundle of game collections oh that's that's recursion right there yeah (laughs) of collections um i bought the uh mega man collection humble bundle okay um because i mean for a while like some of the games i've been talking about like i've been on a bit of a capcom kick like i always knew about capcom growing up and everything but like they were kind of a company that i kind of just ignored and capcoms have had a really strange history where they used to put up so many games mm-hmm. and then they like start getting in trouble or something like that closing down studios and it looked like they were on really shaky ground for a bit until and now they... they're putting out so many games again yeah that they, they they you know rebounded with like you know monster Hunter good... world Monster Hunter them. World, a good a good Resident Evil game. Uh say what you will about Street Fighter V, but like they had so they had Sony's support to make that happen. And now Street Fighter Six, you know, seems to be very well received yep. as well. So they they bounced back in a crazy way. Oh yeah. Uh but yeah, no, they were always just uh someone I knew about, but like I never really played much of their stuff. And I feel like Capcom like even if like say like resident evil or like any of the fighting games don't appeal to you like i feel like they have something for everyone yeah because like i'd say probably the first like big capcom series i kind of took went into was phoenix right was ace attorney um oh yeah i kind of forget that that's a capcom game despite him being in marvel (laughs) vs capcom (laughs) uh but yeah no a lot of stuff i just ignored like getting into like fighting games more so now like i've tried out a bunch of older capcom games and i've been uh playing through the resident evils um monster hunter uh but one i another one i had never touched was mega man yeah actually um i think the first big capcom franchise you interacted with might have been dead rising Oh right, that, that's that's Capcom game. Yeah, yeah, I think that yeah, I think that predates uh... when you played Ace Attorney. I think yeah, well, maybe actually, around maybe I... around the same time, but still. And actually, so like at that same time, like I pr- I also played Devil May Cry Four because I mm. I had gotten a bundle um, of games that they had for the 360. I don't know if they had this for the the PS3 as well at the time, but it was just a little box set. That had Dead Rising One, uh, Lost Planet Colonies Edition. Oh, right, Lost Planet! Holy shit! <laughs> and Devil May Cry Four. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'd got I'd picked that up for the 360. Yeah, so that's probably like, yeah, because like right around that time, the 360 area is kind of when I started getting into Capcom, like checking out some Capcom stuff, I guess. With that, yeah, the other like Dead Rising Two, um. Ace Attorney, Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Yeah. Um, but that was kind of the start of it. But, like, now I'm kind of just... I'm checking out some other stuff. Like, I also want to check out Dragon's Dogma 2. I have I have the first one, Dark Arisen. I haven't played it yet, though. But, like, yeah, I want to check out that, too. Um, that game's ridiculous. <laughs> the climbing mechanics in that game are so funny. Climbing on, like, the... Because, like, yeah, like... You've probably seen a bunch of shots of, like, you know, climbing on these, like, big yep. hydras or ogres and stuff like that. Yep. 
you can climb on like everything. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Like you can climb on like a, like a boar. Like uh, I I just want to I've just been really wanting to check out a lot of Capcom stuff and I I feel like uh they're very quickly moving their way up as one of my favorite developers. Um Nice. But yeah. Mega Man. Um I picked up the Mega Man uh collection bundle which uh which yeah so the bundle included Mega Man Legacy Collections 1 and 2 along with Mega Man 11, Mega Man X Legacy Collection 1 and 2 and Mega Man 0 ZX Legacy Collection. <laughs> That's a lot of Mega uh, Mans. It did also include a coupon for the Humble Store for uh 50% off uh uh, the Battle Network collection. Oh, man. <laughs> but I figure by the time I get through the rest and get to that, I can probably get for more than 50% off on a sale. Maybe. <laughs> um, but yeah, so far, I've only played through Mega Man 1, which, oh boy. <laughs> yeah, that game's messed up. Like, yeah. Really messed up. I, I Definitely definitely a product of the time. Um, yeah. Like, there's, a reason, just, there's a reason why people talk about Mega Man 2 and 3 and don't talk yeah. about Mega Man 1. Um, I'll, I'll admit, so, so the collection does give you a save state to use. And I used it. I put that save state right before Yellow Devil. Yep. <laughs> um, I, I already hated him enough from the stage in Smash. Yeah, that's the reason we don't play that stage. <laughs> yep. Unless it's on a Battlefield... Uh, Battlefield or, mode, uh, yeah. Battlefield mode, or... We don't uh, use the Omega Final Destination mode. Final Destination too boring. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, no, like, I, I think the first iteration of a, of a series is definitely allowed to be flawed. Usually, yeah. Yeah, no, like, uh, I'm looking forward to jumping into the others. Uh, and, I mean, they're... Each one seems to be a pretty quick game to get through. Um, yeah, like, it's it's the old school mentality of, like... We're going to make these games hard, so it takes a while. But if you have, you know, years of game playing experience and kind of, you know, know what the game's about anyways, like, they're a lot easier. Like, as a kid, like, I played a bit of Mega Man 2. I didn't realize that different robot masters were weak to different attacks at the time. Yeah, so, so there definitely there definitely seems to be a unspoke it well i mean obviously like you can look online and find the best order to take on the robot masters in but like there's definitely a an unspoken order they kind of want you to tackle things in and you kind of yeah. got to figure that out uh yeah no I, i'm looking forward to going through some more of those uh i i did also finish my uh playthrough of my my replay of yakuza zero yep which, um, so I did actually get something out of this playthrough. On my initial playthrough of the game, I, I did Kiryu's realty side story. Like, I, I completed that. But I never did Majima's Cabaret Club oh, man. side stuff. <laughs> so I actually got through that this time. And, man, again, through that to unlock Majima's, like, fighting style, actual fighting style. It's so good. <laughs> Yeah. You gotta learn how to run a cabaret club to learn how to stab people with a tonto. <laughs> Who knew? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, so, but also one thing I have noticed, there were quite a few story beats in this game that I'd completely forgotten about. And I don't think that's anything to do about them being forgettable. I think think it's just because the side stuff is so crazy that it completely overrides the main story in my mind making the main story more replayable hmm yeah and like they're, they're, i mean i've said before there's so much wacky side stuff in these games and like honestly kiryu kind of has two side modes the realty and the pocket circuit racing because there's a long line of side stories related to that mode that it's almost <laughs> its own side mode yeah that's, that's so ridiculous a slot car mini game yeah sure that's a, that's a that's a key feature of this game about the yakuza 
Oh man, it's 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 a series that I really I should play more of. I really should. If I play more of, I mean play any of because I've only ever seen less plays of zero and four. So they're just so crazy. Maybe I'll start with Judgment. Maybe that'll be my uh my, my, the way to go about mm. it. Once yeah, I play the two Judgment maybe. games. Who knows? Yeah, I, I just I want to get through these because like. I've just been hearing so much crazy stuff about infinite wealth. I want to get to that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but that's going to be a while before I get to it. Um, oh, actually, quickly, uh, there's one thing I want to say about Yakuza. I, I was talking to a friend about this and like the side stuff, I feel like exists. Like it, it, it or it has like, that same energy as Japanese commercials. Oh man, you know what? You kind like, of have I, something there. I would not at all be surprised if I was playing a Yakuza game and I did a side story where I encountered Long Long Man. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's like there's compile people compile that compile Japanese commercials and they're fantastic. There's also people that compile Jamaican commercials, which are a different kind <laughs> of fantastic because every single commercial is set to music. Mm. Like they, they sing the ad at you, like for almost every commercial, it's, it's fantastic. It's like the fact that there's like a difference in culture of even advertising is so crazy. Uh. But yeah, the uh, only other game I've pl- really sunk time into, I've sunk a lot of time into, into it, is a Unicorn Overlord. Mm, yes, uh, of course. Yep, I got this thing on release day. Uh, at the same time, I bought 13 Sentinels Ag- Aegis Rim, so I'll hopefully be playing that at some point too. I, I, I picked you know, that up as well. Um, who knows when I'll get to it. <laughs> I've only heard interesting things i'll say about it so uh maybe, maybe give me a heads up when you get to it i'll uh try to get some time in too we'll see yeah I'll try and you know have a call have a conversation the problem is is that that's a game that i think that we if we want to talk about in length in the podcast we'd have to do a spoiler cast about it like mm, we have to do something yeah. heavy because like it is such a story-based game like yeah from what i hear about it i don't let know if we're gonna have like you know a 15 minute conversation about how the mech battles are or something like yeah the, ta- <laughs> the tower defense is because i never hear anybody really talking about that part of the game so yeah it's it's, it's always probably, the story yeah okay um which is you know in contrast to unicorn overlord which is all about the gameplay the story is actually really bland and like it's there because it kind of has to be there like the story is basically evil guy betrayed kingdom with dark magic and through the use of like mind control basically like took over the entire world and then like you escape and then 10 years later you try to liberate the world from this evil dude as he's trying to summon some sort of dark force it's very like basic stuff it's it's pretty much the plot of like Fire Emblem or something, which this game actually takes a lot of inspiration from Fire Emblem. Uh, but the the yeah, main like, thing I, of... I see a lot of those character designs. I kind of think Fire Emblem ish. Yeah, like in old... one very particular vanillaware area. Yeah, like a lot of the characters <laughs> have uh, designs giant that are... melons. Okay, that's, I was going to get to that later, but... Uh, yeah, there's um, physics in this game. Uh, you know, the characters look... They look, you know, like hand-drawn kind of stuff. But they're, they're 3D models with with the uh, all, all the uh, physics that that can imply. But a lot, most of the characters that, you know, don't do that uh, are very much like old Fire Emblem yeah. character designs. Yeah. Because, like, that's actually one thing that I'll give Fire Emblem. Fire Emblem very rarely ever sexualizes characters before Awakening. Like, mm-hmm. the only times it did were, like, a couple characters who were, like, dancers or whatever. It's, like, they weren't even that sexualized. They just had, you know, less clothes because that's their class. And that's, you know, what that character design, you know, should be to reflect that. So, uh, 
But the oh, this game. So this game's Ogre Battle, which is wild, because Ogre Battle is a series that went away a long time ago. The last ogre proper ogre battle game was for the N sixty four. And now this game, uh, it reminds me more of the uh, one for the Super Nintendo, just based on a few mechanics. Uh, it's like two rows of three characters, whereas the N64 one was uh, a three by three grid, for example. The N64 one, uh, your, your, uh, your facing when you go into combat mattered. So if you were attacked from the side or the back, like your formation would be all messed up. Oh, uh, which that was actually interesting and something that yeah. maybe maybe would have been interesting to see here. But I I do appreciate that that they kept that part of the game simple because there's so much in this game. You have ten potentially up to ten different squads, of up to five different characters. Uh so it's like you know at maximum fifty characters that you can field on in a battle, and there's a bunch of named characters who have a little bit of personality to them, uh, but honestly not that much not a lot of conversations around those characters outside of uh, a few support conversations and the what little you get of them in the missions that you recruit them in uh that's you know one of the things that takes from fire emblem is that you know large cast of characters but they're not uh super developed characters each character has weapons and ar- weapons and armor ex- and accessories they can equip each character has uh different skills that they learn that, that you can set up in like a programmable tactics uh, kind of way where you can set different priorities and different conditions for these skills to activate. Different weapons will give you additional skills that you're able to use. There's so much uh, like deep dive that you can do with customizing your squad that it's overwhelming. Uh, and this is the kind of game where if this exact game was released like 15 years ago i would have absolutely loved it but now i'm finding that i am not interacting with these systems as much as i could be or have in the past i guess i'm less patient now or something um but i'm getting to the point where i think i'll have to start uh interacting with them more uh the game is the game has uh had a strange difficulty curve where it starts off i'm playing on the hardest difficulty it starts off kind of difficult which is par for the course with strategy games because you just don't have a wealth of options to tackle the situations that you're presented. So you kind of have to use what little you have to make it work. But now I'm getting to the point where the enemy units are all promoted and promoting your units in this game is pretty big because it gives them an extra action, uh, an extra two actions actually during battle. Um, And I'm at the point where I haven't promoted a lot of my units because that costs the same currency that you use to expand your squads. And I've so far I've expanded my squads as much as I can at the point I'm at. Uh, so my characters are a little bit underpowered, so I, I think I'll have to start trying to, you know, optimize a little bit more, tweak things to get through it. Uh, the combat um, of Ogre... Ba- Actually, okay, the combat is interesting because I think that the reason this game was made was due to the popularity of auto battlers and like auto chess and stuff like that. I could see that because those games are all about just like, you know, putting a formation of units with predetermined, you know, AI or actions like you know, say super auto pests and stuff like that. Uh, and that's how this game is where when you get into a fight, each character has a certain amount of actions that they will take before the fight ends. And whoever has the highest remaining percentage of hp at the end is the winner loser gets knocked back and can't do anything for a few seconds and if they get attacked while in that state the enemies will get a first strike on them so they'll do all their actions before you get to use yours so winning combat is very important and there's you know uh spots on the map there people are garrisoned in where if you beat them they don't go into like a waiting period they'll get knocked back they don't lose any of their stamina which is something that's different from Ogre Battle that this game has, where each unit can only have a certain amount of fights before they have to take a long, a long rest, like, you know, 10 seconds or so, which is actually a really long p- amount of time in this game, as I'll get to. In yeah, I, I, I was seeing you play a little bit last night, and 
yeah, no, that, uh, like, you completed the mission, what, like, two minutes game two and time? Half, like, but like it, two and a half minutes. But you were probably playing the actual mission for close to an hour? Uh, I wouldn't say that that half, much, half but, but, but yeah, like half, half an hour or something like that. Yeah, because, like, the game, there's a lot of pausing that goes on as you're determining where your units are supposed to move, what, you know, items you want to use, overworld abilities that you want to use, what you have to deploy, move on where, a lot of, a lot of minutia, like the, whenever combat happens, it pauses, you zoom into the combat, or you can just skip the combat, because it gives you a, pre- it gives you a preview menu of how the combat's going to go, which is very weird, because it takes into, cons- like, that's exactly how the combat will go, uh, despite the fact that there is RNG that, uh, determines things like evasion and stuff like that. It'll it it always... just pre-calculates the RNG. Yeah, it, it pre-calculates the RNG and shows you. Where that gets a little tricky because there's like assist attacks. Like archers and mages can assist and do like a little first strike on enemies when they get to combat. And that won't show on the preview when you're selecting characters to move to attack a certain enemy. But once you get into the combat, it will show on the preview. And... It's funny how it can modify the RNG because you can choose whether or not you want your units to assist because if they, if your units assist, they will lose stamina. So I've had situations where combat's going to go like reasonably well for me, and if I turn on the like an archer assist, I lose the combat because like the archer assist takes up all like the R- the first few RNG rolls and the next few RNG rolls are not in my favor. So it's really it's really weird how how it works um i guess i i guess it's it's good that they did it that way just because uh having your units take a lot of damage and be knocked out is like a problem because then you have to either use items which you have a limited amount of items you can use in a map even if you have a huge stockpile of items you only use up to 10 and like retreating your characters to a fort to like re refresh their hp that takes a a decent amount of time to get them back to like full and there's a time limit on every map and the enemy's constantly shooting reinforcements at you so i guess this is like good in a way that you're not going to get into conference you're not going to have to like eyeball it yourself and figure out if you're going to win because losing is a combat is actually pretty detrimental to getting through the game just like losing an individual combat can can kind of break your break a push so i guess uh, that's fine there, there's no permadeath in this game is there no units no permadeath which is nice honestly um the combat does follow a little bit rock paper scissorsy i think to his detriment it's a little bit too much like that where the char- characters will have certain classes that they're specialized against like you know a uh, heavy knight with a gigantic shield is going to take barely any physical damage but will take a ton from range from uh, magic damage and specifically like, armor piercing attacks to the point where like trying to send physical use against them is basically useless but sending these like counter use to them is like one hit kills and stuff like that um i think that I don't like that as much, and it seems to be a trend that is getting more common in strategy games uh, over time. Like, the old Ogre... Like, Ogre Battle for the Super Nintendo, there was, like... There were only, like, a little bit of, like, weaknesses and, like, resistances in that game, but, like, it's not like your archer units dealt extra damage to flying units or anything like that, like, that common thing. Or there were, like... Uh, units that had like a specific armored trait that made them take like way less physical damage it was just like all stats basically and so there has been a lot of cases where i'll have units that will like lose horribly against a unit or completely destroy you without taking damage and not that many in-betweens um yeah, I think that's to its detriment, but it's not that bad. I understand why it's done. Like, games are designed that way. To, you know, especially with a game that has a ton of customization. To really, like, you know, focus the player on making units to deal with certain enemy classes. And, like, mixing and matching 
uh, to do that. Like, that makes sense. I just, it's not the kind of play style that I like as much. The game is huge. There's so many missions in the game. And there's a lot of, like, little, little things to yeah, do in the overworld. I got a bit of a glance of the overworld map there last night and, like, zoomed out. There seemed to be a lot of uh, little markings on the map. Yeah, because there's, like, a ton of towns and forts and stuff like that. And as you go along and liberate the area, there's some very small liberation missions that are maybe, like, three to five enemies that are just very very quick you can do them in like five minutes like your time i completed one of those missions in four seconds game time (laughs) uh uh and like those will usually unlock like one uh village or fort and then there's side missions stuff like that that will be larger larger maps with multiple of those on the map to you know like go to to rescue units and deploy more units from and then those will liberate like multiple uh, villages and forts on the map. So it's not like every single one of those icons was a like mission that I played, but a lot of those icons were missions that I played. Uh, like I'm maybe halfway through if we go by level cap, but I'm mm. and I'm maybe a little bit less than halfway through when it comes to just like a amount. Or maybe a little bit more than halfway through in terms of amount of region that I've explored and stuff like that. There's like five different regions. Each of them seems to have like different, you know, character classes that they originate from, different environments, stuff like that. Uh, right now I can't even go to two of the regions. One of them I think I might be able to if I complete a mission that is like five levels above my level cap though. My highest level unit right now and that doesn't seem like a battle that I'm going to win. Uh, but, like, the game is, like, it's not non-linear, necessarily. Like, there, it seems like, well, okay, I guess it is non-linear, because technically I have unlocked what seems like the final battle already. It's just that it's, you know, enemy level is 40, and my and my current units are, like, level 19. Oh, <laughs> okay, so, yeah. So like, okay, yeah, I see what you mean now by based on level, you seem to be about halfway. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, uh, but like when I completed the first area, it opened up two other areas, but one of them was clearly like meant for you to approach later. But I did do a couple missions in that area before I was done with the like easier area, for example. So... It's like a little bit non-linear, but it's not like branching. It doesn't feel like there's like hard branching paths or anything like that. You can complete stuff in, you know, different order, but it's not like there's, yeah, multiple paths or anything like that. Uh, so far, I, I'm liking the game a, a good amount. It feels like there is just something that's slightly not clicking with me. Like, this feels like a game that should be I should be like raving about like one of my favorites ever just based on everything that it's doing but something needs a little more time to figure it out (laughs) like i need either need more time for it to click with me or more time to figure out why it's not clicking with me. like this is a game that i'm going to complete that i'm going to put a ton of hours into and probably nominate for awards at the end of the year but in terms of like being super passionate about this something's off i'm not quite sure what yet though i feel like this is gonna be the same situation that i had with like triangle strategy uh mm. a couple years ago where at the time something like there was something that I, I didn't like in the case of that game it just didn't do enough with its premise of the branching yeah. pass uh and then like six months later i'll be like no actually that game was great so I, maybe I maybe the same like... thing will happen here i don't know I feel like few games do take enough advantage of the branching paths when they put them in. Yeah, and I, I understand why why spend a ton of dev time creating content that that people half, might not even see half or more than half of you. Yeah, people won't even see. So I understand. It's just with Triangle Strategy, like that was that was its whole driving factor was yeah. these three you know different paths to go on that mostly just like kind of diamond into each other until you got to the end branch so 
But yeah, Unicorn Overlord, I would recommend it for people who... Like, if you have liked played and liked Ogre Battle in the past, pick this game up. Because there literally hasn't been a game like this, as far as I'm concerned, since the freaking N64. Um, I'm, I'm curious to see if, like, a new Ogre Battle, branded Ogre Battle game will be released. Because, A, that game was supposed to be, like, an eight-part series or something like that. <laughs> and they oh, only really? ever made, like, a, <laughs> and they over, only ever made four. Possibly. Uh, Still because, halfway to go. Because like the tactics ogre games like did fit into the canon. I'm not. I'm not really mm. sure where how all that. Uh, I mean, I, I know there's a out. tactics ogre that that recently got a remake released. Yeah, the second time. It's the second time it's been remastered. It's been re Yeah. Actually, no. It's the third time because it was originally third? a Super Nintendo game. Then it got PSP? released for the PS One. Then oh, PS- it, there was a PS One release of it. I'm pretty sure. Um, then there was the PSP version, and now there's a consoles, Steam's, whatever's version. And I mean, that that is one of the most heralded tactical RPGs ever created. I think it's got some flaws, personally, but like it's, hi- it's highly revered, and the fact that it did get released again, and people seem to like the new version of it, as far as I can tell, uh, maybe that's good things for branded ogre battle to come back maybe this game blows up could see more ogre battle in the future i'd like i'd love to see that it's a a good queen song ogre battle so uh yeah unicorn overlord Uh, it is a full price game though (laughs) but at least at least in this case it seems like there's so much content you'll get a lot of hours out of it so now now full price or full price full price it's 80 bucks canadian okay um i'm curious did you uh check out the demo at all before uh it released no uh i've i've not done that with any of the games i have done like like, like triangle strategy did that as well uh octopath i believe did that as well i like these are games that i knew i was gonna buy and play Mm. um so i'd rather just commit and play the whole thing at once because i'm a i'm i'm very much a binge gamer like i i'm not like playing games every single day but when i do sit down to play a game i will play for a very long session so i didn't i don't necessarily want to be interrupted because i ended the demo and then have to wait a week or two for the full game to come out to pick that up and then i'll have to like kind of relearn it a little bit like with this game specifically that would be terrible because of just how much customization you can do for all your characters Mm. like uh so it it is nice seeing demos though allow you to transfer your progress into the into the main game yeah it's it's, it's for interesting times we live in because there was used to be a bunch of demos and the demos stopped and, and then, then, they, demos then they start calling them betas betas in name <laughs> uh which is a complete misuse of that word yeah and how it's traditionally been used but now and demos are we, back and, and what we see of like over. games in alpha that's not oh, what that's, alpha that's is. ridiculous <laughs> <laughs> that's the worst when when they say like oh yeah pl- we're releasing the uh, our open playable alpha it's like that's not what that means it's not an alpha <laughs> like what are you trying to do? are you trying to like uh i don't know i want to say trick people but just like goad people into playing your game because they they're it feels like you're playing like a super early version of it, kind of like how early access is. I don't know, yeah. but no, that that's a beta. If you're like two weeks from launch and you're putting out something called a beta, no, that's a demo. Yeah, that's not a beta. <laughs> like it, if it's like Street Fighter Six, where like you're like six months more out and you're putting out a playable build, that's a beta. Yeah, sure, that's a beta. You can call that a beta. <laughs> But yeah, like two weeks before release, like, what's the length of time that games take before they need to be pressed on disc before and then release? Yeah, it's like anything that's pressed on a disc, that's not a beta. That's a fi- yeah. That's a final yep. release. I don't care how much day one patches you put into it. That's your, that's your final release. Speaking of our fi- final releases, uh, I that's all I had for uh, the games I've played. Have you played anything that's... else? Um. Yeah, there's one other thing I wanted to talk about in terms of what I've played. I'm not going to say too much about it, and that's Pal World. Right, yes. Um, I put about 
10 hours in it, but it's like, I don't really want to put much more than that into it until it's in full release, because it is still just early access. Right. Um... So, like, I don't really want to form an opinion on it till I've got, till it's gone to that 1.0. But, like, as is right now, like, yeah, it's, it's a survival game. Like, I mean, I used to enjoy survival games a lot, but, like, not as much anymore. I was kind of hoping the whole Pokemon-esque aspect of it was, like, would pull me in a little more, but it's, like, there's no actual, like, Pokemon battles or pal battles. They're more so just fighting alongside you. Yeah. While you gu- shoot stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You can give some of them guns. You can you can get, you can give certain pals guns before you even get guns. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, so, yeah, it's just, it, I'll, I'll give it more time once it hits full release, whenever that is. But for now, I just... I don't know, I don't want to put too much time in it and get burnt out on something that I don't know, ultimately I might not really enjoy, but like I want to I want to see that one point out to form my opinion. Yeah. I I think we're we're in the same boat about that with a lot of early access stuff where we we want to wait for 1.0 to really Yeah. you know, commit I, to I had commit to I had opinion. to check it out a little bit though at least. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the only opinion I have on Power World is a legally actionable one. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I, I saw a list of all the all, of all the Power World ones. Some some on uh, YouTube, uh, Mister One Ups, who's actually a really hilarious uh, YouTuber who does a lot of Pokemon lists, ranked every single pal from Power World. Mm. Uh, and oh my god, yeah. Like okay, when people were talking plagiarism, I was like okay. When you're building like a creature collecting game where you have to have a hundred some odd creatures, it's and hard some to th- be original at this point. It's hard to be original, and some of them, like for example, the the sheep one, for example, like saying that that's plagiarizing Pokemon is not is simply not true. That's plagiarizing yeah. sheep. That's a creature yeah. that exists. How much could you do with a sheep? They're a big ball of wool with a dopey <laughs> face on it. Like you can't do that much with it. So that like I don't consider that plagiarism. I did yeah. see a few th- Twitter threads comparing 3D models, however. Yes. That's where the plagiarism comes in. Yeah, it, but it doesn't look like they were... Um, it doesn't look like they just straight up took it, but rather more so used it like as... In, or as used it as a guide. Yeah, there's, cre- there, there's some that are like very close. Like, like the one that kind of looks like uh, Lichen Rock. Like I think that's one that's very yeah. close, and there, like there's uh, one like there's... serpent looking thing that straight up has Primarina's hair. Yeah, and there's um there's one that's like I think it's called Anubis, but it it, it looks like Lucario. Whatever uh, that Egypt <laughs> Egypt has yeah, yeah. Egypt is yeah government of Egypt go after Nintendo but, <laughs> and Power uh, World. Get, I mean, people paid. were making so much noise about this that the Pokemon company even had to put out a statement to get people to stop, like, messaging them about this game. Oh, yeah. And just so them saying, we're looking into it ourselves. Okay. Whether there's legal action to be taken, and there's been nothing yet. So I, and like, that's Pokemon company, that's Nintendo. Like, if there was something, I feel like the lawyers would be on it already and we'd know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like some of those three demo comparisons, I think maybe the maybe that like they're close enough that that could actually be asset theft, like that could yeah. actually be theft of intellectual property. But as far as the designs go, there's like only like two or something that I think are actually like you know could I I could see as plagiarism. There's the grass cinderace. That's just Cinderace, mm. except green. Yep. Uh, and then there there was one other that I'm uh, forgetting at this moment. But, like, yeah, a lot of them are just like, okay, you know, it looks like some sort of dog. Like, like even, like, the Lycanroc ripoff. Like, okay, Lycanroc already just looks like a, kind of a basic wolf anyways. Yeah. 
That's basically, not plagiarism. Yeah. That's a wolf. Like, I'm sure if you looked at Digimon or... Well, okay, Digimon would be so over-designed you wouldn't be able to tell that it was a wolf. <laughs> but you know, you, you, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> like, Yeah. Like, whatever. Um... Yeah, no, that's it for what I played. But there's a there's one little thing I want to talk about. Something that I've noticed a a key feature that Windows is actually lacking. Oh yeah. Um. So the only way, so if you're using an Xbox controller with Windows, and I'm using it wirelessly with the adapter, mm -hmm. the only way to check the battery life is to open the Xbox Accessories app and actually check. There's oh, okay. hmm. Windows has no kind of notification or anything for when your battery gets low. Yeah. Uh, like... So uh, a couple weeks ago, I was like finishing up the season of Fortnite and I'm just grinding out some battle pass levels, which um, it, it's nice how little you can actually play in a season of Fortnite and actually make pro good progress on those battle passes. Mm -hmm. Um because I just did a lot of grinding at the end, and I didn't play very much in the middle. Uh, but I was playing the rocket racing mode, um, and my controller died about halfway through the first lap of a race. And I'm going through, I'm going through rank, so it's like, oh well, I'm basically out of this race. Yeah. So because I'm, I'm just like, oh, where are my backup double A's? Where where are my two charged ones to swap in? Just throw those in. Took about thirty seconds, and I'm back in. It's like, okay, well, maybe I can catch up with the back of the pack and at least not come in last. Somehow, I did actually come in first. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, what does this game have like Mario Kart items or something? No, no it's just wow. Okay. I don't know how. I just managed to, like I I caught up with the bot like about a third uh, about halfway through the last lap. I I'm like, oh, I see the eleventh place car. I can maybe not get last. And then, like, not long after that, it's like, oh, there's the rest of the pack. And then I just, I managed to get first somehow. Wow. Um, and, like, th this was at a point in Ranked where, like, everyone kind of knows what they're doing. It, it was like, I think I was in Platinum. Mm. Platinum 3 or something like that. Um, but, yeah, that, that kind of got me thinking there really is no... Windows really does not let you know when your controller battery is low. Yeah, but which is weird because that information does exist. Like you said, you yeah. can check the Xbox Accessories app. When I am using my PS4 controller, not on Steam, I have to run a program uh, to like mess with drivers, and that also tells me the battery life in yeah. that. So the information is there, but yeah, the fact that it's not as easily accessible as it probably should be. Is a bit strange. Maybe that's a Windows so, 11 feature. Who knows? So I um I did a little bit of searching to see if there was like a notification or something I could enable, and yeah. I found a program on GitHub. Oh boy. Um, that basically just adds a little icon to your taskbar to show you where the battery level's at when it's connected. And I haven't had the battery get low yet, so I um I haven't like seen how like it notifies me when it gets low. But, like, you can set a custom uh, sound for it. Oh, um, boy. And, um, like, when, when you, like, go to set the sound, it just takes you to the Windows folder with, like, all the Windows sounds. And it's like, oh, you can choose one of these. No. I went with, like, like a while ago, I made I made an audio clip uh, for, for purposes. And uh, so my... Uh, when my battery gets low, hopefully it'll go off and I'll just get the Simpsons silent alarm activated. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, but yeah, no, it's just, it's weird that it's something that Windows lacks and you don't know till your controller dies if you're just using it wirelessly and not wired. Yeah, like, like and, and like, yeah, any, any kind of Bluetooth thing, like I have a Bluetooth speaker that I will occasionally hook up to my PC because I don't actually I don't actually have computer speakers. I either yeah, neither do I. <laughs> either well, put, I, put through my TV or use my Bluetooth speaker. But... I I do I can, I do have the capability of pumping it out through my surround system if I if I want to. <laughs> but yeah, uh, one last thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I went to the uh, near orchestra right. concert. Yes, um, and that was a fantastic show. Um, uh, throughout the whole thing they've got like a so like as they go through it's actually telling a story um 
uh, after the events of uh, Automata. Um, uh, like it's it's telling a story with of two uh, B and nine S after afterwards. Um, so there's like the a big display and like all during the songs they have like a bunch of visuals coming on and of course at one point you've just got bullet hell <laughs> on the screen yeah um there were so many 2B cosplayers there mm-hmm. um and a lineup for merch that went up three stories that's that's ridiculous <laughs> yeah <laughs> um so i i was seated uh first row of the balcony um, yeah. so during, so during the intermission, uh, I was able to get out, get out quick and get into nice, line for the nice. merch and I managed to get merch and get back just in time. Um, in fact, I even had, because they, um, once, uh, once it started back up, they only let people back in between songs. Oh, um, yeah, so I lined up. I got some merch during the intermission. I got I got the shirt and I got a music box. Uh, and I get back. I get to my seat. I look at the shirt. They gave me the wrong size. Oh. So I run back. <laughs> I'm like, hey, you gave me the wrong size. They gave me the right size. And I'm back in my seat just in time for the nice, intermission nice. to end. <laughs> yeah, it's always, it's always tough getting merch at concerts because uh, I remember... When we went to see Rush, we decided to get the like merch before the concert started, but there was obviously a line, and we yep. like finished up our transaction just as they started playing. I was like, yep. "Oh shit, damn it!" We had to run to our seats. It's like I, I didn't want to miss a second of that concert. But at the same time, if you wait too long, they might be out of merch. So. Yeah, of course. I, I, I'm gonna have to make sure I uh, when I when I go to Miku Expo, I'm gonna have to make sure I get down there nice and early. Um. Cause I I gotta get one of the uh, I gotta get one of the glow sticks. Oh God! <laughs> and, 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 <laughs> yep. Got gotta have it. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, that was a uh, that was a really good show. Um, I I I've found I have a, a a real liking for like live orchestra music. Nice. Yeah, I I really want to see Distant Worlds, the uh, Final Fantasy uh, orchestra concert. Mm. Uh, they were here a couple years ago, and just I didn't even know, which is uh, frustrating. Uh, yeah, but I'm uh, I'm kicking myself over not going to the uh, Zelda Symphony when they were here a while back. Oh man, damn it! <laughs> that would have been a good. That would be good to see. Yeah, all right. Got got to set up some email notifications. Yeah, because like it's not like Spotify is going to tell me that. It's not like Ticketmaster is going to tell me that. <laughs> like I have to, I have to like actually subscribe to those places newsletters. Yeah, no, no, I feel, I feel like when, I feel like the last time like the Zelda Orchestra was here was like somewhere in the five to ten year ago range. Like it's yeah. been a while, hmm. but that would have been that would have been nice to see. Yeah, I think we can close out here. Uh, I just had one piece of news that I did want to uh, bring up briefly. Oh yeah, uh, because it relates to. Uh, the game of our year for uh, 2023. Uh, if you haven't listened to those podcasts, go listen to them now because I'm about to tell you what it is. Obviously, uh, it's about Control uh, and how Remedy oh, acquired yes. the rights to Control from uh, 505. Yep. Uh, so that's that's pretty interesting. That's pretty telling. Um, I know when we were talking about it, I think Alex said something to the effect that he wasn't really sure if we were going to see more, uh, like from like the. I can't really say the control universe because it's like the greater remedy universe at this point, yeah. but like more yeah. like from control specifically uh, in the greater remedy verse. But now that they've acquired the uh, full IP rights, that that's pretty telling that there's a very good chance now that we, we will see more uh, control in the future. I wonder if they'll be able to acquire the, um... Oh, why can't I remember the name of it? The, the quantum break. Right <laughs> from Microsoft. I wonder if that's something they'll be able to do. I don't know. I, mean, I, I, I don't think Microsoft's doing anything with it. Maybe, maybe not. Like Bungie got away from but, Microsoft, yeah. which seemed impossible yeah. at the time, and they <laughs> got acquired and then went independent again. Uh, and now they're, well, I guess they're still independent, but funding from Sony. Yeah. At least until uh, 
until they don't make enough money during a year that and then sony has the right to just step in and take control yeah (laughs) contracts are dumb uh so yeah i'm you know good to hear that uh control has been so far you know it's a game that i really liked and it's the only game that i've been interested in when it comes to the remedy verse (laughs) so like uh you know remedy they they do make good games but like i wasn't interested in quantum break i'm not interested at all in alan wake not really don't really care that much about max Payne, but control you know grabbed me with something i was interested in so at least for me that's great news so i can you know interact with their brand of uh storytelling and game design in the future now where does death rally fall into the uh remedy verse i don't know man (laughs) (laughs) listen if, if you go far enough back you can find some really weird games that developers have made like oh yeah like have, have you heard of a game called uh, rock and roll racing it's i feel like i have it's like a game like rc pro am or championship spread or anything like that like the isometric like rally not rally racing but just like racing around a, a track thing but yeah. it it had like midified versions of a bunch of different rock songs in it <laughs> like like you know it's like it's licensed music but not really uh but, and that was a Blizzard Entertainment game. Oh, so, like, like okay, you wouldn't think yeah. you wouldn't think of Blizzard releasing like you know a racing game for the Super no. Nintendo. Very strange stuff there. Everyone gets their start somewhere. Yeah, and and like you know, Cookies and Cream, the like pseudo co op puzzle cutesy adventure game from From Software. <laughs> 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 so yeah, that'd be kind of. It an interesting like list to try and make just like the top 10 strangest games from established publishers and developers so there's, there's definitely some weird ones on on that list but uh yeah so that's about it for us uh if you want to get in contact with us you can always email us at three levels deep at outlook.com leave a comment on the youtube version of this podcast or any other videos that we put out Except the Fire Emblem video, uh, I'm not. I don't. I'm not looking at the comments in that video anymore. Uh, turns turns out I have anxiety. <laughs> so that, that was just like no. I I don't need to. I don't need to be looking at a bunch of negativity right now. Uh, People can sure get uh, heated up over opinions. Over opinions on a game that came out, you know, 15, 20 years ago. That's purely single player. So an objective ranking isn't really relevant at all because there's no competitive scene on it so you know i i was surprised we didn't see any like kind of negativity like that on our uh pokemon starter evolution lines tier list yeah like a couple like, people po- were like po- a couple people were like oh yeah blaziken should be higher and it's like okay well yeah sorry blaziken has to uh carry the dead weight of combuskin <laughs> yep <laughs> and but it's, it's like people people were not like you know, when ad hominem the... attacks on us yeah. for our opinions on that one. Like the fire. But I mean, when you, when you see how like heated the Pokemon fandom can get at times, like I'm oh, surprised yeah. we didn't get anything like that on that video. Yeah. All right. So uh, I'll be that'll do it for uh, this episode of the podcast. Um, have a good. I've got nothing. <laughs> I've got nothing for an outro. It's almost Easter. Happy Easter. Sure, why not? <laughs> Just like a certain person will rise again. What? Okay, bye. <laughs>